Hey there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now this is my third video that I'm doing this week. And today's video is about the Cortex A55. Previously, I spoke about Dynamic, the new uh, processor design from ARM. I spoke about the Cortex A75, the high performance core from ARM. And now we've come to the energy efficiency core. So what is the Cortex A55 and what will it mean to us? Well, let me explain. Now the Cortex A53 has been an absolutely amazing processor. It was a 64-bit processor, it had high energy efficiency, and arms say there have been over 1.7 billion Cortex A53 cores shipped in the last few years. So that's absolutely amazing. And we on all of our phones, whether it's from Huawei or whether it's from Samsung or whether it's one that's using a Qualcomm chipset, there are going to be some Cortex A53 cores in there handling that power efficiency stuff. Now with the advent of Dynamic and this new movement from putting the cores, both the power efficiency cores and the high power cores into the same cluster, ARM have released a new energy efficiency processor to replace the Cortex-A53. So the Cortex-A55 starts where the A53 left off and what they've done is they've tweaked it to make it more power efficient and yet to offer greater performance. So overall, we're going to see round about a 20% increase in performance compared to the A53. And in fact, in some circumstances, particularly with memory intensive throughput, we might even see double the performance compared to the Cortex A53. And if you take a, a, something like Geekbench 4, then over there you're gonna get about 18 to 20% performance in the overall running of the, of the, of the uh, benchmark. So that's a great uh, performance step for this power efficient core, which isn't aimed at performance, it's aimed at power efficiency. And even though it's increased that performance, we actually find a 15% better uh, energy usage. So more performance, low, uh, lower energy performance, what more could we ask for? Now, like the uh, A53 before it, this is an in-order processor. That means it doesn't execute any of the instructions out of order. The order they come in the pipeline is the order that it executes. It doesn't need to try and check to see whether it can run one while it's running another to, to try and, it just says, right, whatever's coming down the pipeline, that's the order I'm gonna execute in, which makes it simpler and of course more power efficient. But of course you do sacrifice a bit of the performance, but that's what the Cortex A75 core is for, of course. And just like the Cortex A75, the A55 is really uh, kind of concentrating on sustained performance. It's all very well saying there's a 20% performance increase, but that only lasts for three minutes and then dives down because the chip gets too hot. No, the, the A55 is also able to maintain that level of sustained performance. Now the Cortex A55 is not gonna get the same kind of attention as the A75 does, because the A75 is where all the benchmark scores are gonna be tested against, gonna be compared different manufacturers with each other. But the reality is we all use the Cortex A53 every single day in our smartphones, and it really has become the bedrock of our mobile computing. And it is important that we understand that the A55 is continuing with that tradition of power efficiency and yet good performance in a 64-bit ARM processor. Now here's a look at some of the micro-architectural details of the Cortex-A55. It is of course based on the Cortex-A53, but now of course we've got the new uh, level two cache integrated because we're moving over to the dynamic core. There's a much better branch predictor, which is important for making sure that the uh, pipe stays full of all of the instructions it needs to run. It's using an in-order eight-stage pipeline, and of course it has the latest ARM architecture revision, which is ARM V8.2. And it's worth mentioning that V8.2 is the standard for the dynamic clusters. So the ARM Cortex A75 and the Cortex A55 are all uh, 8.2 and they have to be the same so that when programs switch from one to the other, the same instructions work in exactly the same way. Which also means, of course, you can't use the A75 with a Cortex A53 and you can't use a Cortex A73 with a Cortex A55. 55. There has to be the 75 and the 55 and whatever future generations ARM bring out using the VR 8.2 architecture. Now it's really interesting because the A55 is actually using a neural network for doing its branch predictors. Now ARM were quite clear that they weren't going to release many details about this, but the, the basically the idea is this. A neural network for a branch predictor is actually a very good and actually quite well known in CPU design field's idea for making branch predictors 
It doesn't use much, much silicon. It gives good results. It's not as good as maybe a complex branch predictor, which is what you find in the A75. It doesn't use a neural network branch predictor, but you do find it in the A55. So when you're using your new phones next year in 2018, just give a thought that the A55 core has got a neural network built into it. And so there we have it, the new power efficiency core from Arm that partners the Cortex A75. We're gonna see it in phones in 2018. We might see phones with four or even six or even seven, uh, eight of these Cortex A55 cores. And just like the Cortex A53 before it, it's gonna become the foundation of our low energy computing over the next few years. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. This is the third video I've made this week about the announcements that ARM have made. The next video will be on the Mali G72 GPU. So make sure you subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Hit that icon bell so that you get a notification when we publish a new video. And last but not least, do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.